my name is Haley Stunkel, and today I'm going to be talking about the values of biodiversity. First, biodiversity is very important to the medical field. Plants and herbs are responsible for the creation of many of today's medications. So, because we have such a large variety in plants, we are able to produce many medications to help cure different diseases around the world. Painkillers like Advil, ibuprofen, and headache relief, and antibiotics like penicillin are some of the most common medications created from plants. Chemicals from wild plants are commonly used to treat depression and cancer. Scientists, pharmacists, and consumers have to be cautious of the prescription and usage of these medications so that antibiotic resistance is not formed and the disease can actually be cured by the medications. Antibiotic resistance happens when bacteria becomes used to a certain antibiotic and the bacteria are no longer affected by the medications. This causes the bacteria to rapidly grow. Biodiversity in plants decreases the chance of antibiotic resistance because we are able to produce different medications and there will always be a new medication to give if bacteria becomes resistant to one. Next, biodiversity provides us with food and energy. Because of biodiversity, animals and humans have a large diet. We have multiple sources for food which lowers competition levels between species since there is enough food for everyone to consume. This helps species stay alive and reduces the threat for endangerment. We are also able to get a well-balanced diet full of all of our macromolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids because we have a larger range of food and choices of what is consumed. These macromolecules provide us with energy, store our energy, regulate our cells, and transmit DNA. Many species in forests get their food from plants like berries and wheat or from the lakes and water. The lakes provide both food with a large marine ecosystem and also water for all the species. Biodiversity has helped maintain soil, water, and air quality because of more oxygen from plants and animals. Animals also help the plants by moving their seeds around through their waste, which helps the population of the plants grow, creating larger habitats and a healthier ecosystem filled with nutrients. Sexual reproduction has a huge impact on biodiversity. Sexual reproduction requires two parents and two different sets of genes. This causes offspring that is different from both the parents. When reproducing sexually, cells use meiosis, which we discussed in first semester. Unlike mitosis, the new child cell is completely different and has different DNA than its parent cells. In meiosis, cells go through two changes, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, to ensure completely new DNA. The chromosomes cross over and exchange chromatids, giving the cells new DNA. Sexual reproduction ties into genetics and heredity, which were second semester topics. The genes of animals or plants determine the physical appearance of its offspring. In plants, this relates a lot to the color and height of the plants. Incomplete dominance will often occur between plants. Offspring will appear a color or height that is in between the traits of their parents. We worked a lot with this with Punnett squares. Biodiversity allows sexual reproduction to happen. If we didn't have biodiversity, all species of plants, animals, and living things would look the same, and all cells would only go through mitosis. There would be no change in anything, and life would be completely different. All humans would look and act exactly the same, and life would be much more boring. Sexual reproduction helps species survive because it allows us to reproduce. The goals of living things is to survive and to reproduce, and sexual reproduction helps settle one of our major two needs. Sexual reproduction is what keeps species constant and what keeps us from dying out. Lastly, there are layers of plants and forests for different reasons. Biodiversity causes all the plants to adapt to each other's living conditions. This creates a more purposeful, productive ecosystem. Since all the plants are trying to fit into the small forest floor, the plants work together creating levels of vegetation. The weeds and plants on the forest floor have adapted to survive without lots of sunlight because the large tops of the trees above block their sunlight. Each layer of plants has special functions. The levels of plants help distribute oxygen and energy throughout the plants by cellular respiration. This helps keep species alive because it provides species with more vegetation. Trees provide shade to animals and humans in the hot summers which helps us survive in the hot months. The plants have evolved over the years and have become much larger and more complex. The first plants were only small plants in bushes and stayed on the ground. Plants have evolved to grow into tall, luscious trees. The chunks of trees have grown thicker to support their tall heights. This proves that plants and trees are able to survive and are compatible species that will be around forever. 
As you can see, biodiversity is greatly valued in our world today. It provides us with medication, food and energy, sexual reproduction and differences in species, and a better, more productive ecosystem. Thanks for listening.